Today we're going to have a look at scientific notation. Well, it's used to write very large and very small numbers in a shorter way. For example, in science, we know that the speed of light is approximately 300 million metres per second. And we also know in maths that we like to write things in shorter ways. And we also know that the mass of a neutron in science is approximately that many grams, which is a very small number. What we need to know is some basics with our powers of 10. So we know about 10 to the power 1 is 10. We follow that pattern, 10 squared is 100. Power of 2, and there's two zeros. Power of 3, three zeros, which is a thousand. And we can follow that pattern down, 10 to the power 4, and 10 to the power 9 with nine zeros gives us a billion. Well, that's for very large numbers, and the pattern can continue on further. Let's have a look at what happens for very small numbers. 10 to the power negative 1, well, we did our negative indices last lesson, which means 1 over 10 to the power 1, which is 1 over 10. 10 to the power minus 2 is 1 over 10 squared, or 100. 10 to the negative 3, and we can continue that pattern to 10 to the negative 9, which is 1 over a million, which again is a very small number. So scientific notation, how do we do it? Well, these are the steps we follow. We start from the left of a number, and we work until we find the first digit that's not zero. We place a decimal point after that, and then we write all the other digits after the decimal point. But don't forget, we don't need any zeros on the end. After that, place a multiplication sign, and then a number 10 after that. Now that doesn't mean we multiply by 10, we've got a little bit further to do. What we now do is we count from where we place that decimal point back to where it originally was, and that indicates our new power of 10 that we're going to have. So if we move that decimal point back to the right, then the index is positive. This represents a very large number. If we move that decimal point back to the left to get to where it was, then this represents a very small number. So let's have a look at that speed of light again which was 300 million metres per second. If we start from the left and find the first digit that's not zero, it's the three. So we write down the three, put a decimal point after it, put all the other digits afterwards, write the multiplication sign, and then a 10. Now we notice we don't know the power yet. Now, if we have a look, we've placed it just here, and the decimal point actually belongs back here after the last zero. So if we count from where we've placed it, which is here, back to where it belongs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then that's where we get our power of eight for. Now we moved it to, from here back to the right where it belongs, which means that's a positive 8. Once we've done that, what I said before and the steps that we follow, we don't need all those zeros on the end of a decimal. So we can just write 3 point with all those zeros as just the number 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. So you notice that instead of having 300 million, we can write that in a shorter way, 3 times 10 to the power 8, and if you actually did that on your calculator, you'd get back to that 300 million. Well, that's an example of a very large number. What happens if it's a very small number, like the mass of that neutron? That's how much it was in grams. We'll follow the same steps. We're going to start from the left and find the first digit that's not zero, which is the one. We're going to write that down, put the decimal point after it, and the other digits afterwards. So let's do that. We've got our times 10, and we don't know the power as yet. So we've placed the decimal point here, 
it actually belongs all the way back here. So we can count how far we've got to move it back to where it actually belongs. And if we were to do that and count, we would find that we'd go to 24 places. But we've moved it to the left, which is the negative direction. So our index now is 10 to the power negative 24. Do I need all these zeros in front of the one? No, we don't. So when we write that, we get our 1.675 times 10 to the negative 24 grams, which indicates a very small number. And again, that's a shorter way of writing that whole large or very small number. But what if there are a lot of digits after the decimal point so that we can't cut off any of the zeros on the end? Well, let's have a look at what happens there. For instance, we have this number here. 653,725,842,905. If I was to try and write that in scientific notation, then it's not going to really be in a shorter form. In fact, it's actually longer because we've put the decimal point in and we've done our power of 10 afterwards. But the process was find the first digit that's not zero on the from the left, put our decimal point, we put it there, it belongs here at the end, which is 11 places to the right. So there we've got our times 10 to the 11. So that's that number written in scientific notation. But it's not shorter. So what we tend to do in those situations is we do a bit of rounding off as well. And the rounding off we use is what we call significant figures. So it's just another form of rounding off. And what we do is, again, we start from the left and find the first digit that's not zero. And that's known as our first significant figure. What we do now is we count the number of required significant figures that we're after. And just like rounding off the decimal places, we put our line down afterwards. That makes it easier for our rounding off. So we round off in the usual manner now. So that is, if the next digit's a large digit after that line, then we add one to the digit in front of it, just like we've been doing before. So let's have a go at this number now. We're going to round this digit off, or this number off, to three significant figures. Okay, so we'll start off, we've already placed it in scientific notation. We'll start with the six, that's our first digit from the left. That's not zero, so that's our first significant figure. There's our second, there's our third, and we're going to put our line down after that third significant figure because we want three of them. So there's our number to start off with, and we've put our line down here. We then check the next digit and see what happens. Our next digit's a large digit, it's a seven, so that means we add one to the digit in the front of the line, so we get approximately 6.54, and we still have our times 10 to the 11. If we don't have that, 6.54 is nothing like what we started off with, that very large number. So we need to make sure we still have our times 10 to the 11. And that's the process of rounding off two significant figures. Okay, so now we have an exercise to practice all of that.